Hi, this is Mike at Design Point Solutions. Today I want to look at how we can create the effect of having a couple of chain links follow a path like we're seeing on the screen here. Uh, and the way that we're really accomplishing this is through a mate called the path mate. So if we go up here to mates and we go under our advanced mates, here we have the path mate. So let's just take a look at how we can go ahead and create that. We'll start out by suppressing the mates that we've already created and we'll sort of start from scratch here so you can see how this particular mate works. Um, one thing I could do uh, to get started here as I go into my path mate is for my component vertex uh, I might be inclined to choose the origin of my part. Um, that's one thing you want to be aware of is that that often will not work and so it's a good idea to create some sketch geometry like we're seeing with each of the parts, each of these chain links that we have here. So what I'm going to do instead is we'll go ahead and we'll just choose a point in one of our sketches as our component vertex and then we want to choose the path and that's going to lock that component onto that path. Now if I stop right here and accept that mate the way I've got it, you'll notice that it'll follow the path but it's not going to hold any sort of uh, direction as far as how the part is oriented. So let's go back in there and take it a step further. So under our pitch yaw control here we have the ability to follow the path. And when I do that, I get some feedback uh, with colors as far as which axis I want to align where. In this case, we'll go ahead and use the Y axis. And now if I was to accept that, we'll see that it's going to maintain that direction, but it's still going to pitch back and forth. So let's go back in one more time. Edit that feature and we'll change this roll control and we'll specify something as an up vector. Now you might be inclined to come in here and click on a face or an edge but you'll notice when I do that no, nothing gets entered into my selection box here. So what it really wants is uh, a face or an edge from something outside of this part itself um, to give it that reference. So I'm just going to use some of one of my default planes from the assembly. We'll accept that. I could switch that if I wanted to as far as which direction is up but it, it got it correct there so we'll go ahead and we'll accept that. And now you can see that I get that movement. However notice as I go around the corner there that the back end here really this point here I really want to remain on that path the whole way around. So we looked there at how we could create this motion following the path just using a single path mate. The next thing we want to look at is uh, how to define this so that I can actually connect all three of these links and have the front and the back of them follow along the path. So we'll delete this path mate that we've created already. and we'll create this a little bit different way. This is going to require more than one mate. So we'll go up to our mate, advanced mate, path mate. We'll start with the front here. And we'll accept that. And then we'll create another path mate for the back. So now what we have is both of them following the path around but obviously we're getting that twisting that we don't want. So that can be fixed simply with another mate. This time we'll use a parallel mate. So where we were able to do it with just one path mate before, now we've accomplished basically the same thing with three mates, but it gives us a little bit more control over our chain link here. So then we'll go ahead and finish this off with the other two links. Here we'll just create 
a mate uh, to make these concentric with each other. And then we'll go to our path mate for the back. And then we'll do the same thing for our third one. And now we've created that same functionality that we saw there at the beginning. So that's just a little bit of an introduction to the PathMate. Uh, there's more we can do with that, but it might be something that you've overlooked or that you might be able to use uh, in the future to be able to give a little bit more control to how your assemblies are working.